Now, the latest thing to break on the Brumby is the DC to DC converter. Here's one of them. I've got, I've actually got two of them in there at the moment. Uh, so what these things do is they take the 150 volts of the main drive system and turn it into 12 volts to charge the 12 volt battery. 12 volt battery down here does the uh, headlights and all those sorts of things, accessories. Um, so the history of the DC to DC converter in this car is I originally had an IOTA uh, 55 amp unit. It wasn't very well sealed and so I put it way up under the bonnet there hoping that it would be out of the water. It wasn't. It lasted about 18 months before it eventually died and, and when I took it apart it had bugs in it and all sorts of things. So I replaced it with two of these Chenik models. Uh, and so they say 35 amps, so two of those would have been 70 amps. So a little bit bigger capacity and waterproof. And two of them, and I was hoping that would mean a bit of redundancy. So if one broke, then I'd be able to sort of limp, limp along and, until I managed to buy another one to replace it. Um, yeah, that didn't exactly work. One broke and I didn't notice and presumably I don't know how long that one was broken and, and now eventually the second one has and so now I don't have any charging for my 12 volt system. I've got a reasonably large 12 volt battery in there, deep cycle one, so I can, I can run a little while anyway. So what I've been doing is I've been, I've got a battery charger over here. Here it is. And so I've been hooking this onto the 12 volt battery when I've been, when I've had it in the garage. And so then the 12 volt battery is charged and I can go for a drive with, with that amount of 12 volt power in there. But it means that I don't want to run the headlights and wipers and all those sorts of things. It's not very good for, for the winter wet weather we've been ha having. So I've bought myself a new converter and we'll go and have a look at it now. Here are my two old DC DC converters and the, and the new one. So these old ones I they died. One of them um, blew a fuse, but I replaced the fuse and that didn't make any difference. The other one hadn't blown the fuse, but wasn't making any voltage. I've gone as far as pulling the, the cover off the end. There's all this potting compound inside. I'm not going to be able to do anything to try and fix these things. So I'm going to throw those away. And in with the new is this Elcon. So this one's rated at, uh, what he was it, 72 amps output, so roughly the same as what the other ones uh, uh, were. Um, the other th good thing is the size. So these were mounted next to each other like that. This one should just nicely mount in the same space. It's more or less the, it's just slightly higher by the look of it, but, but more or less the same dimensions in every way as those two. It's good. So the idea of these things is that the uh, DC output needs to be completely isolated from the DC input. This is the 150 volts input. This is the, the 12 volts output. Uh, well, by the way, it's not exactly 150 volts. Of course, my, the voltage of my car might vary anything from oh, 110, 120, all the way up to 180. And so if you look at the uh, input range on this, converter there we go there so input range there is a hundred to 200 volts so that'll cover my input range nicely so these things here we've got the earth there the um, the other thing on other connector on here is it's got a, a CAN bus in there, which I'm not going to use. But it's also got this enable line. So what they've supplied is this plug for this socket with only a single pin in it. Uh, so too bad if you did want to use it on uh, the, the CAN bus, you'd probably just cut that and put your own plug on if you couldn't find one of these. And it's got a little note in here for this one, which is the, this is the one they've put in there is the enable circuit. And so what they say is provide 12 volts to enable to this enable wire to activate the converter. Now my question is 12 volts in reference to what? Because if it's turned off, you have no 12 volts there, but do we still use that? I, I'd assume we would. So I assume it's 12 volts reference to this, not 12 volts reference to that. 
uh, which is much easier because I've got 12 volts reference to this, but I don't have 12 volts reference to the, to the ground on that one. So we'll connect it up and hopefully that's the way that it works. Okay, here it is in place. I've wired up the, um, the 150 volts through here. Uh, they've, they gave me a, a red and black wire for there, but I've put this orange cover over it to comply with Australian rules. I haven't connected the 12 volts up yet, and I haven't connected the, um, the enable line. So let's get that enable line. This is the enable line here. It goes that way around by the look of it. Okay, so I've got 12 volts on this line here. Let's just check that. Here we go, so 12.5 volts, that's from the battery. And there'll be nothing from that, it's not plugged in yet. So I'll plug that in. That's plugged into the 150 volts. I'll, I'll just turn the 150 volts on. That should be powered now. But not enabled. And so if I put that onto there, yes, 13.8, that's what I'm after. Take that off, turns off. Okay, so I'll wire that enable into just straight onto the, the terminal there with this one, because um, that's permanent 12 volts. And what I want is for this to come on when there is a supply of 150 volts here. Whenever there's a supply, I want the, the 12 volts to be on. Just want it enabled at all times. So let's do that. Oh, I did check, by the way, to make sure it's not going to touch this. That would have been annoying if I hadn't thought of it until now. But it is very convenient how this pretty much lines up with the holes of where the other two were. I've only had to drill one hole, otherwise I'm just using the same, same ones. There we are, ready to go. This unit here cost me about seven or eight hundred dollars Australian. It was um, a US product sold in US dollars, hundred and fifty dollars US to, to ship it to Australia. Uh, but it, it looks good in there. Um, hopefully it's a good enough quality one that this one will last a bit longer. So I'm going to do a test now where I turn on lots of 12 volt things and we'll see what the voltage is. This is the voltage at the 12 volt battery here. I've got another voltage readout in the car. Uh, so I can't see this one, but I can see the one in the car and, and I'll let you know what's going on. Right, so I've turned on the mid-pack contactor, which means we've got our source of 150 volts now, which means that the uh, DC DC converter is making 12 volt voltage, so that's why that went up. Now let's see, what shall we do? We'll turn some lights on. There's the running lights, that's headlights, that's high beam. Oh, it's holding up well in here, still 13.6. That's probably better than it used to be. Uh, I'll turn the car on as well um, so that has a few more things on now there'll be the the contactor in there oh the the noise at the moment is the brake booster okay good um, yeah what else can we do we can do the heat pump so that doesn't use much 
12 volts. It uses a little bit. Um, oh, let's do wipers, but I'll, I'll pick them up off the windscreen. That's wipers on high. Oh, the, um, the fan uses a fair bit of power too. Let's turn that on. So that's the fan for the internal air. Put that on high. There we go. So inside we're, we're sort of going down to 18, at uh, 11.8 and sitting up around 12.5 depending on what those wipers are doing. I suppose I can put my foot, on, oh, I'll turn those wipers back on. Put my foot on the brake, make some more lights happen. And where are my hazard lights? There. They're LEDs anyway. Okay, good. This seems to have plenty of power to keep me going. Okay, quite happy with that. I think I'm on a winner.